On this episode of China Uncensored, it's the 100 year anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution. Let's have a party, a communist party. Leave your money at home though. Also your means of production. Really anything you want to keep. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. The relentless march of history carries on until it reaches its inevitable end with communism or democracy. I'm pretty sure it's one of those. Or robot domination. Okay, definitely one of those three. So, communism, as we all know, has been a smashing success. Well, maybe not in any of these places. But at least in these places. Visit beautiful North Korea. You'll never leave. Seriously, you might not be allowed to leave. So, communism. A smashing success. At least if you're talking about smashing stuff. Anyway, 2017 marks the 100 year anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution, the first communist uprising that didn't immediately fail. In fact, it led to the creation of the Soviet Union, which took a full 70 years to fail. Nonetheless, there are still some who wonder whether communism can rise like a phoenix from the ash heap of history. In looking back at communist history, this opinion article conveniently omits the death and destruction that happened under communism while wondering whether it can have a rebirth. You know, not like the old gulag kind of communism, but a new cool communism. I think that article came out the same week the New York Times style section featured the return of the mullet. So in honor of the momentous 100 year anniversary of Russia's Bolshevik revolution, Let's take a look back at some of the things the New York Times opinion section so quickly glossed over with a brief history of the Communist Party. Marx and the Origins of Communism The ideas of communism can be traced back a long time, but communism as we know it today began in 1848 with the Communist Manifesto written by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. The original hipsters, just look at those beards. Karl Marx saw history from the perspective of a 19th century European man. Namely, he didn't like Mexicans, or black people, or Jews. Least woke hipster ever. Anyway, in the Communist Manifesto, Marx and Engels, uh, this Marx and Engels, laid out their ideas for a heaven on earth where communism abolishes eternal truths, it abolishes all religion and all morality. Abolishing morality? Great! Now we can all club baby seals again. I mean, for the first time. I mean, no. The Paris Commune. Karl Marx thought it was only a matter of time before the workers of the world would unite, tear down society, and establish communism the world over. And obviously hoist him and his ideas up on a pedestal. Um, an equal pedestal. But nothing happened for 23 years. The first uprising that even remotely resembled what Marx and Engels were talking about was the Paris Commune of 1871. Marxist.org describes it as the first successful workers' revolution. It lasted all of 10 weeks. Even Firefly lasted longer than that. But in those 10 weeks, the communist insurrection was very productive. They killed tons of people, burned down a quarter of Paris, and destroyed countless artistic treasures. Though at least the smoke covered up Paris's urine smell. And like Firefly, this brief season of communism gained a small cult following. The Soviet Union. One of communism's early fanboys was the guy who started communist Russia, Lenin. This Lenin. Although Back in the USSR was a great song. In 1917, the Russian Tsar was overthrown in the February Revolution. Then, eight months later, that government was overthrown by the Bolshevik Revolution, led by Lenin. This Lenin. Lenin also began the Red Terror, a campaign of mass murder and torture that killed up to 1.5 million people. What's that, Shelley? What do you mean I have to hurry up? Yes, I know this is a brief history. 
Um, okay. Okay. So Lenin killed a bunch of people and stole their stuff. Then he died. Then Stalin took over. He invented the Gulag system of forced labor camps, killed like 20 million people, and stole way more stuff. Then he died. Then these guys ran the country for a while. Meanwhile, there was an arms race, a space race, and the golden age of James Bond movies. After World War II, the Soviets set up communist governments in satellite states like Poland and East Germany. I see. No time for Poland. What about East Germany? Too bad the Stasi did some really weird stuff. Okay, then the Soviets helped start a bunch of Marxist-Leninist states in Eastern Europe, Africa, and the Borat parts of Asia. Anyway, eventually the guy with the thing on his face came to power. David Hasselhoff sang a song on the Berlin Wall, and the Soviet Union collapsed. And when the Soviet Union fell, so did the rest of the Soviet bloc. Like Nirvana after Kurt Cobain. Moving on to Asia. The People's Republic of China. After sitting out most of World War II, the Chinese Communist Party under Mao Zedong was in a prime position to liberate the war-ravaged country from the ruling Nationalist Party. Mao set out to prove how good of a communist he was by killing way more people than anyone ever. And taking their stuff. And then he died. After that, the Chinese Communist Party realized it should also fix China's economy, or what was left of it. So it gradually added some capitalist things back in. And then the Communist Party reformed. See? According to state-run media, the soldiers were just getting Mushu pork delivery. So the Communist Party ditched communism. Well, just the economic parts. They kept the heart of communism. Mass surveillance, labor camps, brainwashing, corruption, and of course, lots and lots of killing. Even today in China, you can be tortured to death for doing this. Or this. Or this. But hey, why worry about that when your business can make money there? Just don't pray for profits. Speaking of no profits... The Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Following World War II, the Americans and the Soviets split Korea along an arbitrary straight line. But the North and South had some... disagreements. They eventually resolved them by turning the straight border into a squiggly border. Five million deaths later. North Korea is officially run by the Workers' Party. But it's actually run by a bizarre cult that surrounds the Kim family. Like Kim Jong-il. According to his official biography, he wrote six full operas that are better than any in the history of music. Unfortunately, not available on iTunes. North Korea is also the second happiest country on Earth, right behind China. That's according to North Korea, which calls itself the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, a country where men can choose between 10 officially approved hairstyles. Ah, the world of choice. Khmer Rouge. Next in our brief history, the Khmer Rouge, not a film by Baz Luhrmann. The Khmer Rouge was the communist regime that carried out the Cambodian genocide in the 1970s. It did not have any good songs. Pol Pot, um, this Pol Pot, is the guy who ran the Khmer Rouge. And he was a huge fanboy of Mao Zedong. Oh my gosh, I just want to say, I loved your Great Leap Forward. It was killer. And Pol Pot followed Mao's example. In just four years, his regime killed two million people. That's a quarter of Cambodia's population. He especially targeted people who wore glasses, spoke a foreign language, or smiled too much. Wow, he sounds like a psychopathic high school bully. Did he steal their lunch money too? Yeah, probably. Luckily for the remaining three quarters of Cambodia, the Khmer Rouge government was toppled after just four years, when Cambodia was invaded by the next country on our list. Communist Vietnam optimistically called the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. It was formed by the communist revolutionary Ho Chi Minh in 1945. After nearly a decade of war, he and his army finally defeated the French, stole their baguettes, and made some amazing sandwiches. Ho Chi Minh doesn't get nearly enough credit for his accomplishments. In particular, 
He's responsible for the deaths of about 2 million Vietnamese. Meanwhile, the U.S. decided that it had so much fun in the Korean War, it wanted to do a spin-off in Vietnam. But in a surprise twist, the Communist North eventually conquered the South. It was a horrible tragedy, but it did provide an iconic scene for Miss Saigon. Next up, Laos. Uh, never mind, we don't have time for Laos. Moving along. Cuba. Cuba, you've got some explaining to do. In 1959, the U.S. government initially supported the coup by Fidel Castro and the guy from the t-shirt. But like a bad date, the U.S. soon realized it should not have swiped right on Castro. So the U.S. tried to overthrow him and failed. Eventually, the CIA gave up. Just kidding. They tried to assassinate Castro like 600 times. At different times, they attempted to poison Castro's milkshakes, his face cream, and his handkerchief. They even hatched a plan to make his beard fall out so people wouldn't take him seriously. Really? The beard? That's low, even for the CIA. Oh, and there was that time when the Soviets tried to install nuclear missiles in Cuba, and the world almost ended. It didn't, but the premise made an iconic scene for Planet of the Apes. Over the last 60 plus years, Cuba has not been particularly kind to its own citizens. But somehow, this t-shirt of a mass murdering communist is still super popular. Buy it now on Amazon.com. Ironically, it's not free. Speaking of Che Guevara in Latin America, oh, forget it. And now, today. At this point, communist governments have mostly gone the way of the dinosaurs. but like dinosaurs. There are people today who find them immensely fascinating. All over the world, there are registered communist parties. You'll meet people who say things like, well, communism is great, man. It's just never been done right before. If we could just do it without killing 100 million people, it'd be totally awesome. Which is why, to celebrate the aforementioned 100th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution, China Uncensored will be making a special series of videos taking a look back at all the awesome memories we have of communism. So, will communism rise like a phoenix from the ash heap of history? And if it does, how will the world respond? I have one idea. Thanks for watching this um, brief history of the Communist Party. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. See you next time.